This is the first video in Unit 2, Nature's Chemistry, and we'll start with 2.1 homologous series. Now, in the first video, we'll concentrate on alkanes and cycloalkanes, and in the second video, we'll concentrate on alkenes. Let's start by explaining what we mean by the term homologous series. Well, to be a member of a homologous series, you have to fulfill two different criteria. All members of a one homologous series must have the same general formula and they must have similar chemical properties. Over these first two videos we are going to look at three different homologous series. Alkanes, cycloalkanes and alkenes. Now the general formula for the alkanes is Cn H2n plus 2. So for example, if I told you you had an alkane with four carbons, so it was C4, then the number of hydrogens will be 2 times 4, so that's 8 plus 2, so it would be C4H10. The general formula for the cycloalkanes is CnH2n. So if you had four carbons, you'd have eight hydrogens. And the general formula for the alkenes is CnH2n. So again, if you had four carbons, you'd have eight hydrogens. So we see why alkenes are a different homologous series from cycloalkenes and alkenes. But why are these two things in different homologous series when they have the same general formula? Well, they're in different homologous series because they have very different chemical properties. All the alkenes undergo addition reactions which we'll talk about in more detail in the second video whereas cycloalkanes do not undergo addition reactions. So they have the same general formula but they don't have similar chemical properties and that's why they're in two separate homologous series. Well let's start by looking a wee bit more detail at uh, the alkanes. The simplest alkane is the one with just the one carbon. It's methane. Then the next one has two carbons. Remember, when you draw hydrocarbons, every carbon must have four bonds. And then that's ethane. Then the next one has got three carbons. That's propane, and so on. You can just keep on making the carbon chain longer and longer and longer. You expect to be able to name all the alkanes up to eight carbon atoms. So you don't actually have to remember the names because they're given in your data booklet listed in order of increasing number of carbon atoms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So just remember the names of the alkanes are there in your data book. Yeah. Sometimes in questions you're asked to give a molecular formula or sometimes it's a structural formula you're asked for either a full or shortened. So it's important you're aware of the difference between a molecular and a structural formula. So for ethane, for example, the molecular formula is C2H6. just tells you how many carbons and hydrogens there are. The full structural formula really shows you the detail of exactly how these atoms are joined together. The shortened structural formula gives you much the same information as the full structural formula just in a perhaps slightly more confusing manner. So CH3 refers to the first carbon, it's attached to three hydrogens, and then the second carbon is also attached to three hydrogens, so CH3, CH3. Butane, molecular formula, C4H10. Full structural formula shows how all the atoms are joined together. And that information is also given in the shortened structural formula. 
So the first carbon is attached to three hydrogens. The second carbon is only attached to two hydrogens, as is the next carbon. And then the end carbon has got three hydrogens. So make sure if you ask for molecular formula, you give a molecular formula. If you ask for a structural formula, then you can either give a full or a shortened structural formula. Now, it's worth noticing that uh, same butane here. Remember the general formula, CnH2n plus 2? Notice every carbon has got two hydrogens attached to it. <coughs> That's where the CnH2n comes from. But then the end carbons each have an extra hydrogen, which is where the plus 2 comes from. So CnH2n plus 2. So far we're just looking at what we call straight chain alkanes where all the carbons are just in a big long chain but you also get branched alkanes so here's an example of branched alkane it's got seven carbons but you wouldn't call it heptane because in heptane you expect all seven carbons to be in just one big straight chain not branched so the longest chain of carbon atoms is six so it's going to be hexane but it's got a methyl group attached to the third carbon so we name this as three methyl hexane the number of the branch we always number from the end which gives us the smallest number so if we number from the left be one two three four number from the right one two three so we number from the right in this case because that gives us the smallest number here's another branched alkane so here's my longest chain of carbons one two three four five six so it's hexane again but there's two branches we've got a methyl group here and C2H5 is an ethyl group the methyl's on the second carbon the ethyl's on the third carbon when we name it we name the branches in alphabetical order so ethyl comes for methyl so it's 3-ethyl 2-methyl hexane when you write it note you put a hyphen in between a number and a letter here's another one so longest chain of carbons is 4 We've got two branches. Both the branches are methyl groups. So whichever end we number from, it's two and three or two and three. So this is two, three, dimethyl, because we've got two methyl branches. I have four carbons, so it's butane. So you need to be able to name all these branched hydrocarbons. Here's another couple of branched hydrocarbons. This one, we've got two, two dimethylpropane. Note that even though both methyl groups are on the same carbon, the second one, you have to give both numbers. It'd be wrong just say two dimethylpropane. You've got to say two two dimethylpropane. Whereas this one here is two methyl butane. Now what is interesting though if you look at the molecular formula for both hydrocarbons, we've got five carbons and 12 hydrogens so this has got molecular formula C5H12 
and so does this one so this shows how molecular formula is not always that useful so these are both got the same molecular formula but the different molecules and we come across this quite a lot in unit 2 and when you have two molecules with the same molecular formula but a different structure they're called isomers okay, so isomers compounds with the same molecular formula C5H12 in this case but different structural formula Okay, just briefly mention properties and uses of alkanes. Main use of alkanes is as a fuel and burning them. And I've been some burners in the lab, burn propane gas C3H8. The melting and boiling points increase with the size of the molecule. You see that in your data booklet. Here's the boiling points, methane minus 164 gradually increasing up to 126 for octane so that's because as the size of the molecule increases the strength of the intermolecular force between the molecules increases so you need to put in more energy to get them to boil and the final property you should be aware of is that the alkanes are insoluble in water so if you mix together an alkane with water they'll form two separate layers I'll just demonstrate that briefly and I'll use pentane which is the first alkane which is actually a liquid at room temperature methane through to butane are all gases but pentane here's some pentane it's a liquid and I'm going to add it to some water okay. I've put some blue food dye in the water just to try and make it clearer Okay, so if I add these together, you will see they don't mix. They're not the pentane is not soluble in water, and you get two completely separate layers formed. Okay, moving on to cycloalkanes now. General formula CnH2n. Now, in order to make, the main thing about a cycloalkane is you get this ring of carbon atoms. So for example, here we've got propane, okay, an alkane. If we want to make a ring of carbon atoms, we need to remove two hydrogens in order to then join up the carbons together so because we lose two hydrogens general formula instead of being CnH2n plus 2 is just CnH2n now, the cycloalkane with three carbon atoms in the ring is cyclopropane and that's the simplest cycloalkane you can get you can't get a ring of carbon atoms with one or two carbons so three carbons is the first member of the cycloalkane series, cyclopropane. Thereafter you get cyclobutane, cyclopentane, etc. In terms of properties and uses, they have almost identical properties and uses to the alkanes. They burn easily. The melting points and boiling points increase with the size of the molecule and they're not soluble in water. Okay, so five things you should be able to do. You should be able to explain very clearly what is meant by the term homologous series. You should be able to recognise and name members of the alkanes, including branched alkanes and cycloalkanes with up to eight carbon atoms in the longest chain. You should be able to draw a structural formula for hydrocarbons. You should be able to recognise isomers and you should be able to recall the properties of alkanes and cycloalkanes.